Brothers and sisters. Oh, sorry. Scripture readings from First Corinthians, uh, chapter three, verses one to nine. Brothers and sisters, I cannot address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready for it. You are still worldly. worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos? What is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as Jesus has assigned to each their task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has made, God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. Yeah. I, uh, I told Reverend Terry that I'd be using that scripture, which I will. You're not working. It's green. but I, I'm, I'm adding a second lectionary um, scripture as well. So bear with me as I read from De Deuteronomy 30, 15 through 20 in the New Revised Standard Version. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the sovereign God that I am commanding you today by loving the sovereign God, walking in God's ways, and observing God's commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the sovereign God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today but I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the sovereign God, obeying God, and holding fast to God, for that means of life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the sovereign swore to give you and your ancestors to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, I thank you for your word that is not just in the pages of a book, but is living and active in our hearts and in our lives. Inspire us and speak to us this morning. In your holy and precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 So the name of my sermon this morning is A Prophet, An Apostle, and A Conductor. And I know that sounds like the beginning of a really bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not. It's just going to be three stories that I tell today. Two in honor of the lectionary readings that were just read, and one in honor of Black History Month. And I hope that I can weave them all together to make a little bit of sense. The prophet was born into a world of chaos. His people were enslaved. All the baby Israelite baby boys, of which he was one, were being killed. They were being slaughtered. And if that wasn't bad enough, once he finally did get rescued by the Pharaoh's daughter, he had to live with his egomaniac stepbrother. He had a stutter, and he had a really bad temper. All of that, of course, I'm talking about Moses, who was rescued from the waters and taken to live in the palace of the Pharaoh, who was 
raised to see oppression from both sides, from the side where he lived in privilege and from the side where he loved knowing who he was and whose he was. And he had to, at, at one point he saw an Israelite being mistreated, and remember the bad temper I talked about got the best of him, and he beat an Egyptian man to death, and then all of a sudden he had to, he had to take off. His, he recognized that God stood for the oppressed, and it was at that point in his life that his life took a serious turn into his mission. That's the prophet. The apostle, he was actually born quite opposite into a world of privilege. His parents had, had it going up. They knew exactly how to worship. They knew the right theologies. They had all the resources that they needed to have. They made sure that their son had the best training possible, both education-wise and religious-wise. And they did such a good job that he was just, he was such a good follower of their religion. You know, the, the, zealot, the zealous kind that, that killed the people that would come against his religion. He was very good at it, too. He made sure that the words of that Jesus wouldn't get beyond his generation if he had anything to do about it. Of course, I'm talking about Paul. But one day on the way to his next kill, Christian killing rally,